Too bad we couldn't get uh, Emmanuel's burp on that on record. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's Emmanuel Burmaster, just in case. Future, for future reference. <laughs> uh, linear regression is used. All right, let's have a. To predict. What is it? Regression? Regression. R E G R E S S I O N. Linear regression. Sorry, is it, sorry to interrupt. Is this a long line? You interrupt me, then yes. <laughs> oh. I said sorry to interrupt. Uh, it should be. It's an average lesson. Probably okay. 20, 25. 20 minutes, probably. Linear regression is used to predict uh, data, I guess. With that word data? We're going to stick with the word data. So we're finishing off uh, our chapter on stats. We're finishing off the year. Um, there's no new formula in today's class. It's like mean deviation. It's a process. We're going to be finding averages and stuff. We already know how to find averages. But it's how we go about finding those averages is going to be uh, different. So the idea today is that we've now looked at one variable distribution, then found mean, median, mode, we did percentile, we did mean deviation. Then we switched to two variable distributions, and we were looking at, our focus was looking at the link between two variables, the correlation, if it's strong, if it's weak, if it's positive, if it's negative. Today, we're really wrapping it up with the whole point of what we've been doing is to try to predict something. Because if you can predict something in the future based on what you know, then you can make a lot of money, you can save lives, you can... You know, predict weather, you can do a lot of stuff. You can find the relationship between variables. There are a lot of ways to predict it. And what we're doing today is like correlation coefficient and estimation. So the answer that we're going to get, we're all going to get the same answer, though. But the answer that we're going to get is going to be different than what the actual theoretical answer would end up being. Because, again, we're not going into that much detail. So we're finding kind of an estimation on how to predict something. And we're going to do this, this linear regression. Um, and there's a process, and I'll write the steps down. So to do, to do a linear regression, here are the steps. Okay, first thing, order the axes. So take your list, which has two variables in it. X and a Y, whatever the X and the Y are representing. Maybe it's age and whatever. So order the X's. So order the X's first. Now, it says order the X's, but the variables are linked. The X and the Y are the, they're, they're linked. They're, they're a couple. They go hand in hand. So when we put the order, when we put the X's in order, the Y's go with them. I'm just gonna put that in brackets. Y's go with them. Because I'm trying to get you to realize that we're not going to then put the y's in order on top of this. We're going to put the x's in order, and whatever happens with the y's happens with the y's. Don't then take the y's and try to put those in order too. Next, divide the data into two groups. Divide the data into two groups. We have this massive list of numbers, or maybe we only have 10 things. We cut it in half. And I think really clearly you can understand, well, we can't always cut it in half. We have three numbers on a list. We can't cut it in half. There's a, there's a third number. We have to deal with that third number. So we can cut it in half really easily if you have an even number. If you don't have an even number, then we have to decide how we're going to cut it. That's maybe one concern. So if there is odd number keep it closer and do an example that will make a little more sense for the first half 
find the average of the x's and the average of the y's. Call this point P. Take a massive list of numbers, we cut it in half. Look at the first half. From that first half, find the average x and the average y. We don't account for the average, we'll do it in a second. When you find the average x and the average y, that gives you a point. You have an x and a y number. We're going to call that point P. Find individually the x's and the y's? Yeah. The average of just the x's and the average of just the y's. When we have that, that's going to give us a coordinate point P. We're going to do the same thing for, uh, for the y. Sorry, for the second half. So for the second half, find the average of the x's and the average of the y's. Call this point Q. Finally, last step, find the rule of the line using the points P and Q. Now, it looks like a long method, so it's a lot longer perhaps than maybe some of the other things we've done, that's true. But each of the steps is very straightforward. There's nothing in here that's crazy different. We've done all these things already. In fact, it's a nice way to end the year with our last lesson. Because our last lesson, the last step of our last lesson, is the first thing we did this year. Find the rule of the line. Literally, find the A, find the B. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, and B is Y1 minus AX1. So we're finishing our last lesson, and the last step is actually using the first thing we talked about this year. Plus an example. Find the rule of the regression line. numbers. As always, I mean, it, this is likely going to be the only example that we'll do in our notes, so make sure it's clear. If you go back to this, you want to be able to make sure you understand what you're reading. So 0, 10, 1, 10, 2, 9, 4, 7, <coughs> Five, six, three, six, two, eight, two, and 10-1. You should have uh, 10 numbers in your list. You should have 10 numbers in your list. Follow those five steps. I'll try to explain myself along the way. We'll finish the example. I'm going to just show it to you slightly differently. You don't have to write it down afterwards, but I'm just going to show it to you what, what we've done slightly differently. First thing to do is put everything in order. Put the x's in order. The x's in order. Great. Done. You may look at this and say, oh, but the y's are in order too. So be it. That's fine. All we care about is putting the x's in order. If we had to, don't do this in your notes. Let's just pretend. Don't do this. But the 10 1 was here and the 8 2 was here. And it said, first thing, put the x in order. Okay, fine. So flip flop the 8 and the 10. Great, they're in order. No, they're not. So 
the y's have to go with them. So if you flip those x's, then you have to flip those y's too. So if you do need to put the x's in order, make sure the y's go along with them. Okay, next, divide the data into two groups. We have 10 numbers, five and five. So cut it in half, one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna cut it in half. Here's group one, here's group two. First half, second half, anything you want to call it, it doesn't really change anything. So I'm going to take all this, and I'm going to do a bunch of work over here. And I'll do all this, and I'll take a bunch of work and do it over here. How you show this is irrelevant, as always. Just make sure it's clear. I'm showing you one example of how you could show this. So divide the data into two. We just did that. It said if there was an odd number, keep it closer. I'll talk about that, because I'm not going to get to a second example, but I'll talk about it. Let's pretend you had your choice on where you want to cut it. It was either going to be right here. Again, this is not this example, but this was pretend. Let's pretend you had to make a choice. You're going to cut it either right here or right here. Is there an odd number? If there was an odd number. If you cut it here, that would put this 4 with the 5. If you cut it here, it would have put this 4 with the 4. Keep everything close together as close as you can with less variation. So if you had your choice on cutting it here or here, you would pick here because it, was, it would keep this 4 closer to this 4 as opposed to this 5. It's closer to this number than it is to that one. So if you do happen to have a choice, cut it in such a way that you're reducing the amount of variation between the numbers. So that you're putting things closer together that, that should stay together. So like what? Why, why does it matter if it's closer to 4 or closer to 5? Because how we're going to continue the rest of this would actually change the numbers after. Let me, let me make this even clearer. Let's pretend, don't write this down, you had a list. And you had 1, 2, and 5. And the y's are, I don't know, 8, that's not an 8, this is an 8, 7, and 3. And you have to cut this in half. You would never really do this. But let's say you have to cut this in half. Would you cut it in half right here with line A? Would you cut it in half right here with line B? B, B because the 2 is closer to the 1 than it is with the 5. That's it. So step two is done. Step three. For the first half, so let's focus on the first group over here. Find the average of the x's and find the average of the y's. Okay, let's do that. Find the average of the x's. You can li literally write out average of the x's if you want. There's a short form to write average of x's. This. X with a bar on top of it. Do you have to do that? No. I'm just giving you an option. If instead you prefer just calling this X with an average beside it or something like that. That's fine. Doesn't really change anything. So I'm going to find the average of the X's. So 0 plus 1 plus all the way up to 4. We said that we can just do it right like this. Divided by 5. And we get the average of the X's. And you get something. Okay. 2.2? 2. 2. Yeah. 2.2 is the average of the x's. That's the average of the first half. Let's do the same thing for the y's. Find the average of the y's. The average of the y's. So we're going to find the first one. I'm going to call this x bar with a 1 and y bar with a 1. Because it's the average of the first group. Does that say x over? X with a bar on top. No, that's not x over. Average. average. You don't, so again, you don't have to use this bar on top. You can just call it x average or whatever you want to call it. Don't just leave it blank though. Give me a label. So y bar average, or the y average for the first one, would be 10 plus all the way up to 5 divided by 5. That. And you get 8.2. It says in step three, find the average of the x's, find the average of the y's, call whatever you just did point P. So this thing right here is point P. The x coordinate of point P is 2.2. The y coordinate of point P is 8.2. I'm going to write that down right here in the bottom, if I can squeeze it in. Point P is 2.2, comma, 8.2. That's point P. I got it from the average of the x's and the average of the y's. That was step three. Step four, do the exact same thing, but with the second half. I'm going to find x bar two. 
the average of the x's of the second group. Wait, yeah. Y. So x, the average of the x's, the average of the y's. So I'm going to make this oh, a point. I thought it was two, like comma two. No, 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 two point two and eight point two. We'll do the same thing for the second half. Get a seven on the dot. We'll do the same thing for the y's. Find y bar two, the average of the y's for the second half data. You're thinking to yourself, how am I supposed to memorize this for a quiz? Well, actually, I'm not sure if you have this for this. Maybe go into the back. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. 5 plus 3, 8, 10, 13, about 5, 2.6. There's the average of the x's for the second half, the average of the y's for the second half. We're going to call that point Q. So point Q would be 7, 2.6. Our last step now. Anything before we do step 5? Step five says, find the rule of the line. In fact, I'm just going to leave that there. I can refer to it. Find the rule of the line using points P and Q. All right, we have point P, we have point Q. Find the rule of the line. We need to calculate the A. We need to calculate the B. Quick recap, A is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X2. B is y1 minus ax1. So let's do that. Again, this is like the first thing we did this year. We've been doing this pretty religiously every, every few weeks we go back to this. So y2 minus y1 would be 2.6 minus 8.2. Over x2 minus x1 would be 7 minus 2.2. Say that again? Is there a third decimal place there? Another rhythm? Negative 1.166. Or 167 if you want to round it, that's fine. Remember, we're always using three decimal places. That's your A. We can now find the B. You would be Y1, which is 8.2. Minus a, which is negative one point one six six, times x one, which is two point two, and we get ten points. I got seven six. Ten point seven six five. Okay. There's your a. There's your b. So our rule. Is y is equal to negative 1.166x because that's your a plus 10.765 because that's your b. Don't forget there's a little x there. Sometimes you forget. Okay, we'll stop right in there because that's the answer. This is the rule. Oh, what do we call this? The rule. Of regression. I don't need you to write anything else after this. I just want you to make sure that we're on the same page so that I can just talk about what we just did. Get back to the whole point of what we just did and why we did it. Okay, so once you have that last thing written down, all you have to do is just look at the board. So I want to describe to you, maybe in a visual way, what we're doing here. So the, all that data, we could have just put that on a scatter plot. And that scatter plot would have shown us something like this. Put 10 points in, you get this. I don't know, maybe like that. Okay. That would have been the scatter plot. And we could have done the correlation coefficient, but we did. What we just did is we found the rule 
of the line of best fit. I think the science you guys are talking about line of best fit. Yes, no? The line of best fit. Okay. So imagine drawing a line that goes through as many of those two, uh, as many of those points as possible. That kind of matches those points. And you can see that line would kind of look like this. There's the line. That's called the line of best fit. That line of best fit, how do you get it? Besides just eyeballing and looking at it, you actually calculate it. And that's what we just did. This thing right here is that rule that we just figured out. 166x plus 10.765. That's the rule of this thing. What's the point of this? Well, now that we have a rule, we can now start making predictions. Let's pretend we wanted to figure out exactly what the number would have been right here, because you have no dot cycle right there. Well, you can now use this rule to figure out that number. You put the x into the rule, you count the y. Let's pretend you wanted to figure out what that number is right there. No problem, you put the x, get the y. Maybe that one right there, put the x, get the y. So what we're doing with this is we're making a prediction using this. So this is called a line of best fit. The linear regression is to find the rule of that line so that we can actually use it. We'll do more of that tomorrow. That's it. Year's done. Hey, I did it.